<laughs> Hi. Hi. Did you miss us? We missed you. <laughs> oh shit. I mean, mm. huh? Beyonce, can you handle this? Michelle, can you handle this? Kelly, can you handle this? I don't Is that what happened? <laughs> Oh, uh, <laughs> Chad, I, I guess I do some TLC for Patrice. No, okay, I don't, I, I'm done. I don't have time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I would need you to leave the R and B side and go on back to the uh, rap side. You know, that's not me. I know. I'm not that girl. Y'all yeah. know how we do. Y'all know how we do. We're not going to get started until y'all like, comment, share, post us, share us with your friends. We, we like say to something sure. rude. All of those things. We know, you know, we like to be shared. Hey, Regina. Hey, Regina. Hey, girl. Hey. Something is happening with my shit. And I, it's. <sighs> There we go. Okay, let's do it. All right. Oh, All right. right. Are we on? Are we live? We are ready? Are I we think live? we might be. It looks like the light is on. Is the red light on? Shout out to T.S. Madison and Tammy. <laughs> All right. So before we get started in today's topic, we're going to be doing a little bit of advertising and housekeeping. You know how we do. Um. So I have some sad news. <laughs> you guys know. Hey, Robert. Um, You're going to love this topic. <laughs> so my study, the research or the data collection leg has finished. So I've had people to come and make some money and have candid conversations about prep. Um, and it was successful. I really I appreciate it. I appreciate all the people that came out or the, that participated, rather. I'm sorry. I've been on have $300. Dollars. That's nice. <laughs> Right, right, right. So it, it was pretty good. Um, I also want to let you know that um, Crew is still up and running. Um, Sean is not here, but that is the contact person for Crew. Um, they do substance use and mental health using the harm reduction model. I also want to give a shout out to Uplift. Uplift is a um, case management um, <laughs> for the LGBT community. So if you um, are not HIV positive and or are not interested in getting on PrEP, um, you do have another way of kind of um, still in getting case management to meet those basic needs like housing, food, transportation, yeah. and, th and things of that nature. So um, I want to do something a little special for you guys today. Um, we haven't showed this video in a very long time. Um, and I wanted to make sure that this stays embodied and this stays planted in your brain as it relates to testing um, and how we're here to take care of you, no matter what that result may be. So without further ado. Come on in the room. Okay. Here we go. Since everyone is at risk for HIV, getting tested can be an incredibly scary moment. Two different outcomes can lead them down two different paths. One path could be the most devastating news that they could have heard. The other, a wake-up call. This can be an extremely difficult and scary time, but there is hope. Whether the test is positive or negative, they can find hope and compassion at RAIN. RAIN is a place where there is no judgment, where one can find help such as medical case management, help enrolling in health insurance, safe housing, 
food and security support, transportation to appointments, and mental health counseling where you will be treated like family. Rain is a place where your test result never defines who you are and where you'll find the support and tools you need to live a happy and fulfilling life. Two different test results may take you down two different paths, but Rain is here to make sure those paths end in the same place. Live fully with, with or without, without HIV. HIV. So I just wanted to remind the people in the community that we're encouraging you guys to live fully with or without HIV. I'm getting your haircut. best life. I'm getting a haircut tomorrow, y'all. So don't. Oh yeah, this this is gonna be me <laughs> until the election. Saturday. Lord That's what's happening. I'm gonna I'm over it. This shit is bullshit. You better go fucking vote. So that's one of the things that we have actually not talked about. Um, and I would definitely want to address that today. Um, we are all encouraging anybody that is watching, that is watching later on, to go and vote. Please. Um, as a matter of fact, you can watch us while you, while you wait in line to go vote. It's time, people. For real, though. It's time. Because um, crazy uh, people are going to be there. For yeah. real. And they're not going to be the cool, crazy people. These are going to be the motherfuckers that walk around with AKs and shit, standing outside the voting place looking crazy. So I'm going to need y'all to take your asses up there and fucking vote. Thanks. Yes. Um, so please, please, please. Um, it is important to vote. Please vote. Please vote. Please vote. Um, so I also want to let you know that tomorrow... Um, the Carolina Conference on Queer Youth is happening. Whoop, whoop. It will be uh, because of the COVID-19 um, pandemic, we are going to be doing it virtually. Um, I, myself, and some of my coworkers will be presenting at the pre um, at tomorrow's um, conference. So if you have not registered, I don't, I don't think it is too late. Um, we can actually send you a link um, if you inbox one of us so that you can be registered and get and participate inside of that that um, conversation. Forum. Forum. Thank mm. you. I can find the I can find the word. Um, <laughs> there are <laughs> there are a lot of different workshops um, that that you can kind of join um, for tomorrow. So it's not um, just mine. There's a couple of ones that's happening at the same time. There's one at 940 that starts, and then the other leg starts at, like, uh, I think, 11. Um, is a break in between. So if you're interested, please, 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 please go ahead and, 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 and send me a message so I can get you the link so you can register and, and, and actually join tomorrow. Uh, Sounds like it would be fun. Also, I know I'm doing a lot today. <laughs> But we are also doing Gay Bingo virtually this year as well. If you don't know about Gay Bingo, you it's have, so much fun. It's the you best, are missing the out. The best thing ever. If you've never been to Gay Bingo, you are missing out. Um, last year was my first time doing it. Last year, me too. They put they put me in drag, y'all, <laughs> and I had such a good time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I had this. Oh my god! I had such a good time. I was trying to show you guys some videos of last year, little 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 different clips. But um, for whatever reason, my computer wanted to act crazy and it didn't want to pull it up. So uh, I'm unable to kind of show you that. However, it is a, it is, it is a good time. I'm gonna show you some um a, a video. Um, later on in the conversation um so that you can kind of see the advertising for it and how you can kind of join and be a part of that mm -hmm. we are going to be doing it virtually as well so you will have to buy a ticket to, to view um what's happening the 
theme this year is going to be the Olympics. So <laughs> we've actually um, uh, in the country, um, and is, is there going to be like a three a three level thing? Please tell me there is a three level first, thing? second, third. The medal, the medal stand. When you go get oh. the medals for the Olympics, there may be, there may be, there yes. may be, there may be. Uh, <laughs> you, all, you will see us actually doing Olympic things. So we're going to be like. Like actually, oh, wow. yeah, we're going to be doing like games, um, competing against each other. Um, so you will see all of that. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. So and three and three dance numbers. <laughs> so please, please, please watch. Oh, y'all dancing for real? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, tonight. I'm you know what I'm gonna say, Johnny? Yeah, <laughs> with that dance. <laughs> so, um. Even though the 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 event is called Gay Bingo, um, this is going to be a legway to what we're talking about today. Um, it's not just for the gay community. Um, we've had so many of our straight allies come, have a wonderful time. My dad, who is my dad, <laughs> is, um, a very heterosexual man in the streets, um, <laughs> came and had a good time as well. So if he can come, um, he's probably one of the straightest guys that I know and have a good time. Anybody can come and participate and, and have a good time. Um, okay. So it, 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 you know, it's nothing. Um, but it actually brings us to our conversation that we're having today, which is straight with gay best friends. Do you have a straight best friend? Straight mm. with gay best friend. Is that really your best friend? <laughs> Not I'm coming for the gold. Oh, okay. That sounded sexual. Okay. All right. But I really, uh, <laughs> I, first, I really want to talk about: Do you define yourself as the gay best friend, or do you just define yourself as a friend? Um, Johnny, how would you define yourself being a friend to somebody? Hey, everybody. Hey, Benaja. Um, so. Hey, Kevin. <laughs> So, um, how how do I define my friendship? Is that what you're asking me? How you define yourself? Do you call yourself the gay best friend? Do you enjoy being called a gay best friend, or do you just oh, consider no, yourself no, a friend? No, 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 no. Um, <laughs> if you have to put a label on me as a friend to you, we're not friends first and foremost because I don't need to be your gay best friend. If I'm your best friend, I'm your best friend. My sexual orientation has nothing to do with that. Um, not to mention, um. It, it that that adjective is just not needed to be, you know um it's for what um so i mean you know and i do understand this i understand the concept of you have different friends for different occasions right so you can you can group your friends i i, I am a, a firm believer of that you have different friends for different occasions <laughs> there are some friends that i would invite to, a, to an event that i would not invite others and vice versa um however i'm not that ain't have to you grow out of that huh <laughs> you grow out of that. I you used to be to, like that. You have nothing to do with that sexual orientation. Um, no. So, right. It so, should. Right. Mm -hmm. My nephews are my nephews. My kids are my kids. Um, and I never make a distinction between any of them. And then people will be like, you have kids? I do. They're just adult kids. <laughs> right. Background. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like my nephews call me auntie. It's the whole thing. Mm -hmm. As I it should be. I definitely agree with Johnny. I feel like you call me your gay best friend. It's like, oh, you'll be my friend because I'm gay. Like, if I was straight, would you not want to be my friend? Or do you just want to pick my brain and ask me questions that you too uncomfortable to go up to a random gay person to ask? Like, how does this work? How do you do that? So I definitely agree. Like, I would just describe myself as my friend. Like, I don't go to Andrew, but like, you're my Asian friend. Like, you know, you're my friend. Like, <laughs> Right. You know, like, right. What's happening? Yeah. And, and then I you also don't need, and I also don't need you to break the ice for me, right? So, for instance, I think that that's that, that's also that 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 that, that um, introductory of a gay person is in the room. Um, mm -hmm. I don't, you know, I'm trying to break that ice and I make it less awkward. No, let me come in there and and, and wreck shop my my way. Don't try to do it your way and, and, and actually ease the pain. 
because I want to skip people's natural reaction to me and who I am as an individual, not because you're introducing right. me as, as my gay, as my gay best friend, because it also hurts my relationship with with other people, right? Right. No, it it creates stigma. stigma. It creates stigma, and now they looking at they they looking out for the gay tendencies, so to say, right? To mm -hmm. to separate me from a person. Don't do that. Right. So yeah, that's how I feel about that. And then they hit you with that. Hey! Uh, right. oh my God. The extra. <laughs> I'm extra with it too. I can. I am so guilty of that shit. <laughs> I'm so guilty of that, and I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You know what, you know, I can't see it, but you know, yeah, I can see it. I can. I can see right. it. I can see it. <laughs> I can see it. I try not to do it until I see if you know. You can tell when people are not cool with you saying certain things. And I think as the straight person that has a lot of gay friends, like it's always mm -hmm. something. Especially when I like go to work and I always say, oh my God, I'm so fucking over it. <laughs> and no, she'd be like, what are you talking about? I don't so, my straight friends, my straight friends. They're just my friends. Like, so yeah, yeah. Greg, so Greg <laughs> says, first he says lies. Um, <laughs> my girl best friend is titled for a reason. Um, if you got a straight friend, don't, um, if you got a straight friend, don't, don't he get his title? Um, I always play off by my straight friends. It's required. So I can understand that in so in different in this way, but I still don't agree with it because I can understand a, you like, okay, so I have a straight friend that's okay with gay community, right? He's able to come around and be comfortable and be his authentic self, you know, amount, amount you know, things like that. But you don't want your, your friends to try your friends, friends, friends to try to hit on him or things like that. So I can understand that a little bit better. However, um, if he's comfortable with his sexuality and like he knows how to, you know, circle around that, get around that, you know, respectfully decline and say, oh, I'm good, you know, I'm and things like that. That's not um so I would still I would still say no. Um he's he's an expert on on how to introduce him, himself and let the room know that he's a straight male. Let that male be a male, you know. Right. I agree. But you know, people still try it. You know. I think it's just a level of uh just kind of like what white people learn about black people. I think it's the same thing that straight people have to learn about gay people. I used to have roommates that were all guys. It was three guys and my husband. They're all from New York, different boroughs, and they had never really hung out with no gay people, really. But if you're gonna be around, you're gonna be around gay people. It's kind of not gonna miss it. And to people who were somewhat homophobic from the Bronx to people who looked at people that it was cool for them to all, when they were getting ready to leave or when we were there to look at me and say, you know what? They told him not what I thought they were gonna be. I had drag queen friends who wanted to come over and whoop their ass on video games. And then I have nephews and kids that would come over there and hang out and play cards and all the shit and drink. So you can, you know, it's just about education and kind of being that bridge to make it natural and not kind of a confrontation. Mm. Mm. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Bryce. No, I, I agree. No, I agree. I agree with what you said. <laughs> I agree with everything you said. You know what I mean? I agree. But there have been times when I'm like, oh, this is my friend. They're straight. And then another person like, oh, I, I could turn them. And I'm just like... Oh, that's the dumbest shit. Oh, I'm my like, God. Leave that man alone, please. <laughs> Leave that man alone. Yeah, I, hate, I hate that. Like, first of all, like... And then when you, you run up on them, mm -mm, and they right. give you the blues, then you're mad. Right. And it's gay bashing. <laughs> and, and again, we we had we had no way promoting violence. We're in no way saying mm -hmm. that gay violence don't that gay, that gay bashing does not happen, and then it is not a thing because we both we all three, including the audience, know that it, that it's definitely a thing. However, comma, when you approach somebody 
with the intent to say that I can turn him, you gonna get what you got coming for to you, right? And that's just that. Just like straight boys who go up to lesbians and say the same shit. They you're stupid coach. and you're insecure. Yeah. The only people that have problems with gay people are people that are insecure with not only themselves but with their own sexuality. Anybody um, else is fine. Greg says, my thing is folks' mouths have to be censored. So by pre clarifying those titles, this helps folks avoid certain things to say around folks. Um, I disagree. I disagree completely. I disagree. Because my thing is why we had a censor, why can't I be my why can't my I be my authentic self? If I'm right. buck, I'm buck, right? Period. I, I'm I'm gonna be buck with my gay friends, quote unquote, because if you want to use the title, I'm gonna be that same <laughs> I'm gonna be that same buck bitch with my straight friends, right? And things like that. So if I'm buck, I'm buck. Why right? I gotta code switch and switch it up just because who I'm around. I have to be me no matter I'm like I talk like this in front of my parents without the cussing. Yes, this is me. Yes, she is. Mm-hmm. Yes, it is. And I don't I can't I mm, so Patrice many is things. Trace is buck. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm a kinder, gentler person in my old age. So Greg, I, I have a question for you. You said so you want to go about offending folks. What no, is offensive? Nobody's... What How is, is offensive? that offensive? What is offensive about somebody being authentically them? Um, I, and I want you to kind of put that in the chat and let me know. Um, because there's a difference in between. Again, if you bringing a quote unquote, and I'm going to add the title because they clarify your straight friend around a, a group of you know gay folks. You obviously that that straight friend is obviously comfortable with being around you know your friends right they're comfortable with you things like that so if they're that comfortable again i'm going to go back to saying let that man be a man so if he feels uncomfortable he, he can voice that and say that if he feels like somebody's hitting on him he can respectfully you know tell that person i that's not my speed you know i'm good on that and things like that and then not be a big thing right so right. you you are adding to the stigma of a straight person cannot coexist in a room full of gay people because right. you're nervous about what's going to be said, how things going to be said. But again, allow people to divert, allow people to to um, make the you know the, their decisions and 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 those organic conflicts and let them you know handle it appropriately, right? Um, it's called apologetic politics, just like when black people try to be nice. The police, that's a thing. I've been reading up on it. That's what it's called for real. <laughs> when you like try to tell the people or the man that you're sorry for the way other, um, you know, people have been perceived and, oh, I'm so sorry, sir, and officer, and blah, blah, blah. That's what they do. Ew. That's crazy. Don't get me wrong. Because I have been that person, but only because somebody told me I had to be. Because I was with all the shit. So, right now, there's a lot of sensitivity in language, okay? For a person, which is true, I agree with that. For a person who would prefer to not offend folks with things they say, help them become, help them to become unoffensive inoffensive um i'm generation z and i feel like people say it's sensitive it's not when, you, when somebody says something messed up you gotta let them know what they said was messed up so now we have a whole generation of people telling adults what you're saying is messed up and it's like oh you're too sensitive no because if i was really sensitive like you think i am i would have never said anything in the first place so when somebody says something messed up you gotta let them know what you said was messed up and why it was messed up Right, because if some dude out in the street say something to me, dude, that's <laughs> up off of me. What's happening? No. <laughs> and that's gonna be the nicest thing I say. <sighs> yeah, and you and you and you, and you know, like, um, I I think for me, I think for 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 Greg, I think for me is you don't have any trust within your friends. Um, and I think that that's what it ultimately boils down to, right? That you know, you don't have trust in between your friends to kind of 
a for a you know for that buck person to comment stuff down which they shouldn't have to um and b for your straight friend to respond respectfully and accordingly to make sure that the, the, the conflict doesn't blow up um you have to you have to put trust in your people man uh and, and, and allow them to have that you know that that interaction right um that's just trust um before we move on to the next question i do want to um acknowledge this comment as well mark anthony says of course my real brother goes to chase's chase's is, is a um gay bar slash club for anybody that doesn't know my real brother goes to chase's and gets hit on all the time but he respects but but he is respectful with his responses see yeah, it can happen. Do you talk now? About I wanna, uh, I wanna say I got a question that's next, <laughs> <clears throat> and I want y'all to hold on to your belts, okay? Do you talk about your sex life with your straight friends or with your gay friends? Yeah, they ask. <laughs> I think. I think it's a curiosity thing. I think they want to, it's like a compare politics. Like they want to compare how sex is like for a heterosexual couple versus what sex is like for a same sex couple. Also too, I get a lot of questions from straight women who like, when their boyfriends are interested in like butt stuff, whether it's- And anal. You know, whether it's yeah. being done to them or they, or their boyfriend wants to eat their butt or they want, or their boyfriend wants them to eat their butt and they kind of ask you, is that normal? I know. <laughs> Is he gay? And I'm like, no, nah, nah, nah. he, he wants you to eat. But like, what? He wants you to. You're a woman, right? right. He, like, he's not asking you. Uh, like, you know, he wants you to eat. But, but usually, um, I don't have a problem. In general, I don't have a problem talking about it. So if somebody asks me a question about it, I'll just find out answer it. But I don't feel like they just asking me because, like. My friend, she wanted to know how do you, how do you bottom, like how you enjoy anal sex, and she wanted to know about the whole the cleaning clearing process and the lubes and all of that. And she, you know, I had my homegirl. She asked me about my penis. I told her, she you know, she looked at me dead in my soul. She said, "Yeah, baby, I tried it once and never again." She said, "Mm mm." Right. <laughs> she said, "I almost about died." She said, "You know, I had to look back." <laughs> oh, that's funny. Johnny, so yeah, yes, um, to my straight male friends, um, but that's very rare, um, and a lot of my straight male friends are like childhood friends, or friends that I've had since high school, friends I've had since middle school that we've connected and stay connected over the years. Um, so maybe early on in our friendship, that was a curiosity of theirs, but as of now, honestly and truly, um, as of now, honestly and truly. Um, I I'm can't kidding. even. Um, as of now, honestly and truly, um, <laughs> no, I, I don't. Um, with my male straight friends now, of course, my female straight friends are, are are different. You know, they we are we do have those conversations and things like that. Um, it's a little bit more relaxed with them. Um, and not saying that I wouldn't have it with my male straight friends as well, but that conversation just 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 doesn't naturally come up. Um, all the time. So, but, um. I do think that um, <laughs> I was I, I was reading Greg's comment and I kind of <laughs> lost my train of thought, so I'm not sure <laughs> where I was going anymore. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna hit you with the don't engage, don't engage. <laughs> no, but um, I don't think. It's well, oh, I know exactly where I was going with this. Hold on, mm -hmm. my partner. Um, I'm not gonna mention what, what, what who he is. Um, he's told me that he that he has a straight friend um and they probably been friends for a very long time and whatever and he says to me that like him and his friends do talk about their straight friend do you talk about sex or things like that or do you talk about you know their sex lives individually um and you know have open conversation a straight friend ask questions he's a male straight friend he asks questions and things like that um i, I want to say do not quote me on this i want to say the friend is also of a different race so he's a white he's white as well um so so but they had they, but they had those conversations and things like that and, and talk and and all the time apparently so um i've seen him successfully do it in this day and age or in, in a relationship that he currently has and that is very strong so yes that's what i wanted that's, that's what i was going with that and that comment kind of blew me 
<laughs> yeah, I had to tell on um, one of my straight roommates in college that the girl he just had brought over, she's thug. I walked in the room and I said, "You had a girl over here." He was like, "Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, she don't bring her back over here no more. She's tiny." <laughs> And what did he say? <laughs> he was like, "Dang, bro!" I said, "Yeah, I got some Febreze, though." So. <laughs> I'm so, I'm so serious. I walked in the room and I was like, oh. I was like yeah. "Oh man, oh my!" Mm-mm. Well, for me, I, I talk about sex with everybody. So. Typically, me and my nephews like to compare notes when I was, you know, <laughs> single. It was kind of a, a competition, but, you know, that ends when you're in a relationship. My my shit is boring. So I enjoy hearing their stories because it makes me remember when. Relationships don't have to be boring. I didn't say it was, it's, a, it's not something to tell anybody about. Not that the actual whatever is boring. <laughs> yes, Robert. Yes. <laughs> but no, I'm, uh, I'm I'm down for whatever. Like I like to talk about it. We can talk about it. Um, straight. I folk, can't. I just can't. I just straight, can't. Straight folks can be interested in details, but not interested in experience. And in, in that's true. Why would why just because you talk about something you wanna? I don't no, understand. Some people are just genuinely curious, like they just genuinely want to know, like want to know, like right. hey, how are you gonna not under? How are you ever know if you don't ask? Right, right. Mm-hmm. Like no. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> now, if y'all watching porn together, that's a different situation. Well, oh. well, that's it could be. Uh oh, both of y'all froze. <laughs> Well, we're having some short technical difficulties. Johnny and Patrice both froze. Lord. Hold on, y'all. Uh, what I was going to say was I was going to say if you're watching porn together that don't mean nothing's going to happen it could just be something that you two do together um, but you know if something does happen you know just feel the moment honestly and truly that's all you can really do but honestly, um, back to the other topic at hand, um, I feel like curiosity um, really sometimes kills the cat. So if you really want to know something, you really have to ask. And some things are meant to be experienced with another person. And a lot of times, um, people are too afraid to ask about the experience, especially as it relates to a same-sex couple, because they're too afraid to be labeled as seen as gay or seen as weird for doing it. But I never really had a problem um, talking about it. Uh, as for me, I never really shared any type of experience sex as it is sexual with either my straight female friends or my straight male friends. But there was a time when, um, this is back in college, I was we was drunk leaving the club, so I could not drive home. So I spent the night with a straight male friend. And I slept in the bed with him, but nothing happened. So the next morning, his mother woke up, and she was like, um, I heard him talking in the hallway, and she was like, where he sleep? And he was like, in the bed with me, and that was it. And I thought that was, I didn't think it was weird, but I think it was kind of pretty good, because it's like, we're two guys, two different sexualities, but we were able to 
be that close to be that intimate and it, that's just what it was just two guys sleeping in the same bed but a lot of people might hear that and take it the wrong way like oh something happened or like what y'all doing or he might be getting low but no that was my friend and we just had a, and even when his mother asked that question like where did he sleep and he was like in the bed with me she was kind of like but it is what it is so sure and Johnny is back. Sorry we had that technical difficulty. We was frozen for a little bit, but Yes. Me and I think I had to do with the VMware. That was so weird. Uh, <laughs> so weird. And so annoying at the same time. But I um that kind of Yes. Well, I was, cut. Yeah. I was basically sharing a story about um I was talking to them about how curiosity killed the cat and sometimes people need to ask questions to really know. And then I shared a story about how one time me and a straight friend both slept, slept in the same bed. And nothing happened, but just the way his mother reacted to it was kind of like, mm. yeah. I've you know, and I've had that experience as well. Um, when I was you know, in teen years in high school, again, I had a lot of straight friends. Am I frozen again? No, you good. You good? Yeah. I don't, am I frozen again? No, you good. Okay, um, I have a lot of straight friends, and so you know, I barely spent the night with people's houses, um, things like that. I actually never spent the night with people's houses. Um, <laughs> <What>? <laughs> I just, I just didn't. I don't know. I, 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 it was weird. It was. I had a very weird lifestyle, but I've never spent the night with, with people's houses, um, things like that. <laughs> but um, it was um. Mm-hmm. But I was st- I still had very intimate moments with my straight friends because you know we were close. We were almost mm-hmm. like they considered me as brothers and things like that. And we, you know, what I'm saying we were hugs, mm-hmm. we have each other plates and things like that. You know, mm-hmm. wrestling and things like that. And there was never no, you know, what I'm saying like I've always first of all I I I, I was a fighter back in the day anyway. So you know, um, I there was no. <laughs> Like you trying to address me about sexuality and not seeing his hands, mm-hmm. so I can show you how straight of a man that I can be. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think after like proving that in stages of, di- of of different stages of my life, like it was so easy for me to kind of connect with with any walks of life, right? And just and be, and be myself and be friends and and build like that brotherhood. Like I have like people that I still call my like, these are my brothers. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's never been on no gay. It's never been on, on no intimate or anything like that. It's literally like these are people that have grew I grew up with they grew up with me and we have just been mm-hmm. like authentically you know just there um so I've, I've had those mom- not I had I had moments like that Bryce but not in that particular way of sleeping in the same bed because I didn't spend out nobody's houses but that intimacy was was there with my straight friends straight male friends as well yes mm-hmm. that bro that bro crush that bro crush that man crush <laughs> that, that bromance bromance yeah, bromance there you go, there you go. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love a good that is fun. <laughs> no, but I also wanted to bring up how has there ever been a situation where people question your friendship or has been jealous of your friendship as you being uh, I don't want to quote you as this, but as you being a gay best friend and them like people looked at y'all sideways to being friends, or has there ever been a time when? Because personally, my experience, um, I always have issues where my female best friends, their partners don't like me even though I'm gay, but they still like, oh, he's still a man, and this and this and that. And every time we're together, we're near each other, or we're doing something together, it's always a problem. So I want to know, have any of you guys ever experienced anything like that? Well, hold on, because I feel like you've asked, like, you just asked, like, three questions in one. I did. Uh, so let's, let's let's break them questions down. I did. <laughs> so the first one would be, your first, your first <laughs> question was, um, um, has your relationship with your gay straight friend ever been challenged? Mm-hmm. And when that, um, that question is being like challenged by somebody else outside the friendship, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I can see. Yeah, so I think that you you, you have a pretty good example. Um, like you being introduced as somebody's friend, it's 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 the um public know you gay, so you know they know <laughs> that and he's, and he's straight. Um, so they're like, oh, bro, you, you know, oh, he gay mm-hmm. or you gay too for being his friend mm-hmm. um, and things like that. And, you know, and it was just like, what? Um, 
What are you talking about? Mm-hmm. What's like why? Like I don't why I'm why I'm gay because I'm hanging out with him. Like you know what I'm saying. Like, so mm-hmm. yeah, I've 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 seen that. I've had I've, I've I don't know if I ever had that before. Now that I think about it, I can't I can't remember. Um, <laughs> I don't know actually, Bryce. Hmm. Really? No, I don't know about this one. I had that from my friend's partners. That's the only time I had that from. Um, yeah. I really never had it from like outside, but and as I say, my friend's partner as it relates to my female straight friend. I never had it had a challenge with my straight male friends that I know of. Nobody's ever brought it to my attention, or I never heard anything. But like, I always run into that same situation. Okay, so we'll we'll, we'll, we'll get to the partner thing later because I do want to definitely um, um unpack that one. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but how, how Patrice? What about you? Have you ever or seen or experienced that or? Um, oh God, yes. Has anybody ever made you feel bad for being friends with a whole bunch of gay people? They tried to. Mm. I have a, fam- a couple family members that tried to, but I'm very that? overprotective. So, what was, what was that experience you know. like for you, and how did you overcome that? I'm very, <laughs> very. <laughs> <laughs> so, like. Tell a story. Give us an example of something. What happened? I mean, there are so many stories. Um, I've had people from my hometown, which is very rural and very small. Um, I can't believe so and so is gay. Um, talk when they were talking about my sister. Um, you know, I feel so sorry for you. And um, what are you guys gonna do? And you know, politely said, "Fuck you." <laughs> and um, if you say that again, it's gonna be a problem. Understood. Yeah. Yeah, understand that. Um, mm-hmm. What yeah. about the the next the next one, um, which kind of directly um, goes with that first question that Bryce just asked? Has your straight friends ever taken up for you? Um, yes. Why or why why or why not? It, oh, why or why not? Is it important? It's important because um, it shows that you they respect you as a person. They respect your friendship. The same way where I had to defend my Latino friends, where people were calling them Mexican, but not every single Latino person is from Mexico. You get what I'm saying? Right. So they were saying things to them, like calling them Mexican, calling them Puerto Rican. When we had people from Nicaragua, El Salvador, Ecuador, so. Whenever somebody tried to say something negatively about me being gay, um, my friends will stand up for me and defend me because I was their friend. And then, and, and just in the long haul, it's just regular human decency. Like, just respect me as a person, as a human. And so, it is important, well, to me, because it shows that how you respect our friendship. And even if somebody was to try to bad mouth, Y'all, to me, I would defend y'all because y'all my friends, and that's how it's supposed to be. You get yeah. what I'm saying? Like, we're not doing that over here. Hello? We ain't got time for that. that. <laughs> we not doing that. And they took up for me. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, um, it that never was an issue. My, my only time that I would question that is what what are people saying behind my back to you, and what are you, and you know, and are you defending me then? But when it comes down to like we're together and somebody say say some shit to me, I didn't need you to say nothing because that's not your battle, that's my battle, right? And I'm gonna I'm gonna handle that accordingly. Um, I didn't need to back up. I didn't, I didn't need to think like that because that was just you. Hey, I'm gonna show you how much I'm gonna show you this. I'm gonna show you this masculinity with these hands, right? Um, back in the day, I ain't like that no more. Um, <laughs> but um, so I never really that back in for when I so when I think about these questions, I'm think course I'm thinking about. You know my early teen years and you know and things like that and and the 19 20 21 and things like that um, that's what i think about so back then i really didn't have that um i had already like like grew from having people to defend me or ne- needed somebody to kind of be in my corner i didn't really need that i never relied on that i've always i've always fought alone i always fought my own battles and mm-hmm. so my only but what i have always questioned or what i will question is what are you saying when i'm not around right um like what are people saying about me and what are you listening to and what is your response to that um is what i'd be wanting to know um so that was it for that particular question 
Patrice pretty much already answered this question. Yes. Right? <laughs> <laughs> um, but see, I um, they never so publicly. If we're out, we've been out like after the club. Um, and they've been performing all night and we'll go to a restaurant, like a 24 hour restaurant. And um, if people say something, they won't let me say anything. Yes. Cause it's going to be a whole situation. And your mouth is very reckless. On purpose. Okay. But people shouldn't be saying <laughs> nothing though. That's the, they should have just sat there and ate their food. Like, I mean, they should have, but we all know yeah. that people very rarely do what they should do. That's right. That's you know, right. I when I used to date people, if they couldn't be comfortable around my family, you know, I can't date you. Period. I don't. I don't need it. What's the problem? Why are you sitting there and shutting the fuck up? You ain't shut the fuck up all day. Now you're sitting over there looking uncomfortable. Get the fuck out. It's okay. I'm all right. I just couldn't. I just I, no, no. <laughs> Y'all want to transition to that last question? Mm-hmm. Bring it to me. Mm-hmm. It's not okay. Uh, yeah, go. Pooh. My mother still wants me and my best friend Shatavia to get married. Like, she had our whole life plan for us. Like, she's like, that's still my daughter in law. I'm my little girl. Give me a hand. <laughs> Look at me. Sit down. Look. I'm not going to happen, baby. I'm gay. Gay. <laughs> gay. Okay. You're gay. <laughs> gay. You are gay. My brother is gay. But um, as I was saying earlier, uh, yeah, it's always that male partner. I don't know why. They're just jealous of our friendship. They're and insecure is what they are. Insecure. And it's like, uh, I'm not going to drop somebody that I know before you just because I don't need to drop my friends to prove my loyalty to you. That's as simple as right. that. We've been I'm not dropping my friends for no fucking body. We've been friends since kindergarten. You popped up two months ago. Like friends and family, I'm sorry, you're gonna have to leave. That's it. I'm not no. Now I did I do have a friend, a male gay friend, who I was his uh pretend wife for a long time. That was a beard. I was a be a whole beard, like a nice full <laughs> Rick Ross beard, like yes. ZZ Top beard, <laughs> like going to company functions, fucking engagement ring, like the you look. Yes, I was that kind of friend. Whatever you need, baby, I got you. Don't worry about it. Because his, his family didn't know, and like it was a whole big issue. So I was like, all right, I don't. It's cool. Let's let's do it. You know, um, so I've never really had a beard, so to say, because I was actually genuinely interested in women um, and things like that. So I've always had that um, interest in both. Um, but I also had a very similar situation to Bryce where I had this girl, my my mother and her mother was best friends. And like and she was a pretty girl. If, if I really wanted to talk, like get with somebody, a female and actually, you know, spend a life with, the, with a female. It will probably be her because she was bad. I'm talking about banging. She and she grew up to be like, like beautiful. Oh my gosh! Like she is fucking gorgeous. Um, and um, and we we continue to be friends as well. Just so happens she also liked females. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I don't know. So it's it's it, you know. Um, but um. So I've had that similar situation, um, and like, and I've you know had girlfriends in between that time frame, or have met with girls in between that time frame, or things like that. But I've never really wanted to be serious, or have thought about being serious with anybody but her, honestly and truly, um, um, as it relates to a relationship. 
um, especially because we knew each other's lifestyles and we were okay with each other's lifestyle. Um, and so we've already kind of had that, that conversation before. Um, so I think that, so that would have been, you know, a change for me. But for the question, I have had, um, I have had a, a, my best friend's partner have an issue with me or, or, or feel, I ain't gonna say issue, but feel uncomfortable by my presence. Mm-hmm. I've also had friends that knew what the deal was and was comfortable. We can sit and watch Purple Rain, you know what I'm saying, and end up performing together. Like I, I've had a mixture of both and things like that. And again, one of the things that I think is important and I wanna share with you guys is that no, I don't change up who I am because of your comfortability. I'm not gonna change myself now I talk because it makes you uncomfortable, right? Um, and so, you know, I let my friend girls like know that, like, you know, if 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 if, if he ain't good with with what I got going on, then that's his business. But I'm gonna I'm gonna continue to be me, right? And things like that. Um, and so, you know, I'm I make jokes sometimes and say, "Oh, what's up, bro?" But you know, but that ain't how I'm you want to. You know what I'm, I, like, I'm just joking. You know what I'm saying? I'm just I'm just trying I'm just trying to shoot the shit with you, mm-hmm. things like that. But like. My authentic me is, is going to be me regardless, right? You know what I'm saying? I'm like, especially if I'm around my best friend and she's a female and we like to cut up sometimes, I'm going to cut up, girl. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm going to do all of that. I'm what, you know what I'm saying? Because that's authentically me. If that makes you uncomfortable, then oh, well, I've had a friend where, um, and I've also had it turned around where like I'll slept in the bed with my friend, girls, things like that. And, that. and that happens all the time with things like that. So we slept in the bed together, we sleep, we drunk. You know what I'm saying? I may put my arm around them. We may, you know what I'm saying, like that. And it's, you know, bro, that's a dude. Like, well, you know, you sleep in the bed with the rest of a dude. Man, that's like my sister. That's we not how that works. Like, exactly. Come on, stop. Um, so I've had it both ways. I've had it both ways, honestly. Yeah. I ignore them. Especially when we go out and she brings the boyfriends. I'm like, oh, so you brought the boy. Hi, boy. And then we just keep having fun. That's it. Like, I don't... Not the boy. I sound like somebody else I know. <laughs> 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 like, oh, you brought the boy. Hey, boy, he arrived for the night. Oh. And he be driving the yeah. too. My nephew calls us thing one and thing two. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now he's shortening it to just one and two. Oh, my God. Hey, one, hey, two. Right. Y'all ready to go? <laughs> 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 I just um, I think what I really want to take away from this is that uh, people could be friends with who they want to be with and we shouldn't let outside people define our friendships especially because it is something that's intimate and it's something that some friendships last longer than relationships keep it high you know and um, it's something that is needed for this lifetime you need friends outside your your partner comfort zone yeah yeah <laughs> you need friends outside your comfort zone and it's also um, good because we always talk about, you know, culture training, sensitivity training. It's also good to learn, you know, and how you going to learn if you never open up yourself to new people, new experiences. That's right. Mm-hmm. I had to learn that, too. So. You're laughing at my sister, Johnny. Yeah, she <laughs> messed <laughs> Yes, I am. Um, so, um, as we wrap up this topic, I have a surprise for you guys. <laughs> oh, <I'm so> <laughs> um, I was able to find a clip from last year games bingo. Oh my god. Hey. I wanna say um today's topic was was actually um interesting. Um we're actually gonna bring this topic up later on. Um you know, um, down the line, we're going to bring some of our personal friends, if they would like to come on and have that conversation about our relation, about in the, their, our relationship and how it's grown and things like that. I wanted to do that tonight, but because we were so busy, we've been busy up to the wall with stuff. Um, we didn't have the opportunity to kind of make sure that we solidified that idea um, and got the people involved like we wanted to. So we will talk about this again. Um, we will have better representation um, of not, I ain't gonna say better representation, but we, but we wanna have representation of, you know, the spectrum of friends um, and how they've been impacted by having a quote unquote, and I'm doing parentheses, a gay best friend. Um, so 
we'll talk about that um, again if 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 that's something that um, kind of comes up later, and I'm sure it will. Um, so, without further ado, I first want to show you um, the theme in the video for this, the theme um, and the advertising for this year's day bingo, and I want to show you what you missed out on last year. <laughs> it's like a I feel like a strobe light on the video. <laughs> this ain't your grandma's morning. Join us Saturday, November 14th for the virtual games of Day Bingo, where you'll be entertained from start to finish. It's all the best parts of bingo, minus bingo. The evening will be an hour filled with DVD performances, raffle prizes, laughs, and our favorite part, snarky commentary from Barbara Burning Bush. Go to GayBingoCLT.org and get your live stream tickets today. Did it say join the messy fun? Yes, yes it did. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> um, so that was um, the theme and the current hey, China. for this year. Um, but I wanted to kind of give you an exclusive. <laughs> right. I want to give you an exclusive of what we did last year. Um, and this is uh, if you wasn't in the show, I mean, if you wasn't, if you didn't come, you wouldn't have seen this. We've never posted it. We don't we usually don't post them anywhere because we want people to kind of come and buy. So this is a special exclusive of one segment. Um, <laughs> so here we go. I love Jeopardy. It's a great game. It's really the only TV show game I watch. It's fantastic. I don't like TV TV games. I think they're just um they distract people. Family Fortune. Oh God, I hate Family Feud. Uh, uh oh. Especially since T Steve Harvey been on there. Oh my God. <laughs> it's the teeth for me. <laughs> it's cut hair for me. <laughs> <laughs> it's horrible. <laughs> Oh shit. Let me get some volume. Let me get some volume. Uh oh. I'm sorry, y'all. Can we not hear? Yeah. You can hear? Yeah. Well, I can't hear them talking. Okay, I'm so sorry, you guys. Give me one second because it is not giving sound, and I want y'all to get the full effect. <laughs> oh, it's okay. Sometimes technology gets the best of us. Yes. Because you know, if it wasn't an apple, then if it was an apple, then it wouldn't work at all. That's correct. We all know Apple phones suck, dude. Don't, don't look at me like that. They do. <laughs> have you seen the new one? Because they have a new one every year. Yeah, the 12. That comes in five different sizes. 
Right. Stomp it on out. <laughs> Look at Laura over there. Yes, Laura. Wasn't this the opening number? No, this the closing number. Well, okay. Oh, this the closing. That was going to be my next guess. Oh, yeah. This is when Johnny was showing out, bro. Mm -hmm. he, was, he was showing up the whole crowd. He said, oh, okay. okay. Here you go, bitch. Get some. <laughs> Ow. 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 Did you see that I stole your ponytail, Johnny? Uh -huh. <laughs> I love that ponytail. Uh -uh. Yes, hi. Yes. <laughs> you gonna get this little, all of this in this red suit, baby. As the rest of them look like somebody's uh, grandma. Oh. Good night. <laughs> Johnny gonna post it up and show it out, baby. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Laura looking like the next wife on uh, the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Oh Lord! Feeling it, feeling it, feeling yes. it. <laughs> yes, I'm in charge of the girls. <laughs> Period. Oh, uh, look at them poor babies. <laughs> <laughs> he tried it on these hoes. Yes, he did. Look at that runway. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, I love the one with the blue beard, though. He he had my favorite face. She had my favorite face of the night. It's fantastic. <laughs> so, so y'all take it too long, so. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> you see it? You see it? <laughs> that's why. That's why he he had to do a solo run. Okay. Everybody else doing two by two. Mm -mm, mm -mm, not I, Johnny. No, sir. I need to be seen, and you're going to love it. Love, love. And then you had another to vote. Cat, 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 cat. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. That's what's up. I enjoyed it though. I loved the little day. That was a good night. I really enjoyed the whole show. It was it was a good time. It was my first one, so and I, I was really surprised. I didn't know how they were gonna pull it off. Yes, fan. Yes. Superhero say tonight. Okay. <laughs> Every time. Every time. That was a little tea from last year. A little year. sneak peek. <laughs> a little sneak peek from last year. Um, again, if you did not make it, you just saw the amazing shit that you just saw just now. Can you imagine what we're going to do? <laughs> we're not even going to talk about how drunk everybody is. Oh my gosh. Right. Um, the crowd. We had so many people there. We were in the convention center last year. It was lit. It was lit. Too. It was lit. So, with that being said, I'm going to leave y'all with that tonight. So, thank y'all for joining. Make sure y'all tune in next week. See you next, next Thursday. Week. We're going to be talking same about... Same bad time, same bad channel. I'm still going to look like this. Over Code, code switching. switching. Code switching is what we're going to be talking about next. Yes, week. blue um, ponytail with the green lips. I love it, right? <laughs> Isn't that cute? And is, is, is her nose contoured? Yes. <laughs> Did you say? Hey, his mama said, right, she's over there crying. What's going on? So, um, she ain't got no week. nice, she ain't got no people in her corner. <laughs> tune in next week. So that you can be a part of that conversation. And 
I want to tell you one thing and one thing only. <laughs> I'm going to get into this tie. Getting tested. Indeed. 